Hi, and welcome to the first lesson of this course, in which we are going to focus on the references, the creatures we can find, the descriptions, and the definition of mythology. I also want to explain what Celtic culture is, as it's the main culture we are going to study throughout the course. To start with, I want to define the Celtic mythology as a combination of myths characterized by a number of imaginary beliefs. These tend to tell stories about the creatures that can be related or not to religion, but certainly related to the culture. They are usually legends created to explain some phenomenon, like, for example, a natural phenomenon, or to explain their own culture's origin, or perhaps to explain an event without a logical explanation, and so on. But not all of the myths have an explanatory nature, because the big majority of them are related to a deity. And, well, we have to bear in mind that many of them are simply stories that had been passed on generations, and we shouldn't give much credit. For example, Celtic mythology is quite connected to gods. And maybe let's use another example. For example, the Romans. Within this culture, um, we find that there are a lot of gods that are linked to nature. For example, there is a god of the sun and a god of the moon, and each of them is in charge of the day and the night, so the days go by because of these gods. In the past, they wouldn't think that the earth was rounded and it could rotate about its axis, but it was some god's duty, like the god of wind or water. The Celtic culture belongs to a civilization that appeared in the Iron Age and was spread across different parts of Europe. It was a specific empire, but a combination of communities that had a certain autonomy that allowed them to have a well-defined politic system. But generally, as they were warrior cultures, They kept constantly fighting despite sharing religion or traditions. So, although they shared the same ideology or religion or other characteristics, they were always fighting against each other because of um, power. So, they wanted to have control over the others to occupy territory, that's all. So... The issues were all about the border's expansion rather than different thoughts they could have. Well, we also know that um, Celtic culture is quite present nowadays. We still have uh, the languages, but obviously they have changed, but we have them. We can also find some similarity in the symbols across Northern Europe like, for example, between the Scottish, Irish, and Welsh. They share some characteristics. So, as I was saying, its main characteristic was that, despite sharing these cultural features, the Celtic communities used to be confronted because they shared warrior nature. Okay, let's go back to the mythology because that's why we are here, right? In this course. So, the Celtic mythology is known for a number of tales that belongs to the religion in the Iron Age. Just like any other community in the same period, we find that this mythology was polytheist, which means that they worship more than one god. Oh, 
Also, it had a close relationship with the Romans, but this mythology was totally smashed by the Roman Empire because they were all forced to convert to Christianity and to change their original languages. However, the Celtic community, who kept the linguistic and political identity, was also linked to the original Celtic mythology. So, although it wasn't politically unified and it wasn't under the, the cultural influence, they differed on religious matters constantly, so they ended up having different beliefs. For example, the myths, like I said before, about the sun or the wind, um, they ended subdivided in many different legends. Nowadays, we have legends like the Tupacabra, literally goat sucker in Spanish, or the Jetty and many more that live in our imagination. Inscriptions have been found representing more than 300 deities. However, according to what we know today about Celtic mythology, we can say that there is a pattern that looks much more unified than people usually believe. Nature and the role of these antique gods can be deduced by its names, the iconography and the image that they represent in the end. These can help you to find, for example, uh, how to represent a god. For instance, the god of water or the god of wind is represented with leaves, an ethereal look, or maybe with wings or something similar, something that can represent this god. Well, after having this brief lesson about Celtic mythology and its description, we'll be moving on to what I want you to make as the final project. So, what I want you to do for your final project? Okay, our project will be based on some descriptions that I leave you on the attachment section and I'll explain it in detail to say how you can pass the text to the actual project. As an example or as a reference, I'll be doing for myths, it is for creatures, that we are going to draw throughout the course to submit as a final project. The first one will be the brownie, which is a small domestic elf in charge of helping in the housework. Then we have also uh, selkies, which are half human, half seals. Then we'll see the cow and neck. These are a kind of demons that basically can cost your death if you ever hear their screams. And finally, we have the gilly-do that are fairies. So, I'm going to use as a reference this amazing film that fits perfectly with the aesthetic I want to express in my final project. This is the Spiderwick Chronicles, and I want to create a sketchbook look, like a book to give a different aspect to our portfolio. So, guys, see you in the next lesson where we are going to start drawing. So, see you!